every quack that comes along is writing some book about how to relax and how to get your mind off tension and how to relax, relax. That's the battle cry of this age, relax. Why, it's getting to be, it's getting to be so bad that every quack that comes along writes some silly drivel about hypertension and relaxing and sublimation of values and compensation of difficulties and so forth and so on. And yet the answer to how to relax and the answer about the problem of finding rest and the answer to all of these mental and emotional problems was solved over 1900 years ago and no man has ever presented a better solution since. The greatest teacher that ever lived gave us the answer to the problems of relaxing and tension when he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and ye shall find rest to your souls. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the problem of relaxation and finding rest was solved over 1900 years ago. Wouldn't you think that by now, wouldn't you think that by now somebody would have learned a lesson from this and taken the advice of our Lord Jesus Christ when he said, come unto me? But men have changed it. In their own inane foolishness, men have changed it to mean uh, come to a church and you'll find rest, or come to an institution and you'll find rest, or come to a catechism and you'll find rest or come to a council and you'll find rest, or come to a club, or a lodge, or a society and you'll find rest. But Jesus said it when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and ye shall find rest to your soul. Now here's a man I'm drawing right here, and this man has a, a pack on his back. This man is bearing a burden. And this man is bearing the heaviest burden a man can bear. Now, there are many burdens. Some of you have to support your mother or your father. Some of you have to support a sick aunt or uncle. Some men I know are supporting sick, sick wives. And sick wives are supporting uh, husbands. And many women who are hardly capable of working are working themselves to death trying to support the families. There are all kinds of burdens you can have. You can have the burden of a broken heart. You can have the burden of an outraged conscience. You can have the burden of a guilty conscience, but the greatest burden a man can have is the burden this man here is having. And I'll show you this burden in just a minute. Now, this man's burden, I'm gonna say some things about it before I tell you what it is. This man's burden causes him to do a number of things. This man's burden causes him to pretend to be happy when he's not. This man's burden caused this fellow to maintain an outward morality, but inside, he doesn't have any check on his passions. This burden this man has makes him explain the Bible away, even when he can't. The burden this man is carrying makes him stand up for a religion that doesn't do him any good. And this man's burden makes this man hope for heaven while he's preparing for hell. Now, if ever a man had a burden, this man had one. What is this burden the man has? Well, you can see he's staggering under it. You can see the sweat pouring off his face. You can see how he's clothed. He's clad in the filthy rags of his own self-righteousness. And he's crossing a hot, rocky, and steamy desert with cactus plants and heat waves coming off the desert. This man has a terrible burden. He's staggering under the load. Now, what is this man's burden? Well, it's the heaviest burden a man can bear. The burden of this man is the burden of unforgiven sins. And I say to you tonight, in all sincerity and in all honesty, that the greatest burden a man can bear is the burden of unforgiven sins. That's enough to make any man stagger. That's enough to make any man stagger neath the load. And if this man staggers across a hot and dry desert, the sweat pouring off his body, he's staggering under the worst load a man ever carried. It makes me even hot to think about it. I think I'll take off my coat before I finish this drawing, of the man with the burden that's almost too hard to bear. Yes, the burden of unforgiven sins is the worst burden a man or woman can carry. I say, first of all, it's the worst burden because a person must maintain an outward morality without any inward check upon the passions. And one of the worst curses a man or woman can carry is the burden of trying to live a moral, decent life with no one to help them. A person who's saved has the Holy Spirit to help them. But a man who's never received Christ must do it in his own strength. And that's a heavy burden. That's a heavy burden. I say further, the burden of unforgiven sin is the world's heaviest burden 
because it makes a man pretend to be happy while God is against him. The Bible says the wrath of God abides upon a man who will not receive Christ as his personal savior. And how can you be happy with God fighting against you? People wonder why so many things go wrong in this world. That's easy. God Almighty is against people until they do the thing he's told them to do and asked them to do and they know his right to do and have no excuse for not doing. Why, you tell me tonight you've never received Christ, but you're happy. I don't believe you. I wouldn't believe you one time out of a million. The Bible says there is no peace to the wicked, saith my God. I've never met a happy person, a person with true happiness in my life outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a man or woman who has never received him. I've heard men say they were happy without him, but even the look on their face gave truth to the lie they told. They weren't happy. The Bible says there is no peace to the wicked, saith my God. And a man who has never received Jesus Christ is not a happy man. He may put on a show, he may have fun, he may get a kick out of comedy shows and ball games, but he's not a happy man. He has no real deep peace and abiding joy. No, he doesn't. R.A. Torrey, who used to preach many years ago, was the great man of God. And R.A. Torrey used to hold up a $20 gold piece in the middle of his services. And R.A. Torrey would hold out the $20 gold piece, and he'd say this. He'd say, I'll give this $20 gold piece. He said, I'll give this $20 gold piece to any man, woman, or child in this building who will take my hand and look me in the face and tell me they've never received Jesus, but they're happy. And in over 40 years of preaching, R.A. Torrey never had a man take that gold piece out of his hand. One day when R.A. Torrey was standing at the door of the church, a man walked out, a wealthy man in that town, and Torrey held out the $20 gold piece to him. And he said, sir, he said, uh, wouldn't you like to take this $20 gold piece under those conditions I just mentioned? And the man looked Torrey right straight in the face and he said, you know no man could comply with those conditions. You're safe. Of course he was safe. You can't look any man on this earth straight in the face, straight between the eyes, and tell him you have real deep peace and abiding joy, and yet you've never received Christ. You might do it and lie, but you couldn't do it and tell the truth. Because the Bible says there is no peace to the wicked, saith my God. Well, the burden of unforgiven sins that this man is bearing on his shoulders across a hot and dry place, the valley of unbelief, the burden he is bearing is the greatest burden because he has to explain the Bible away while he's carrying the burden. Men are always trying to explain the Bible away. I imagine some of the greatest intellectual effort that has ever been put forth has been put forth to explain the Bible away. And men have done everything but suicide, and some of them laugh to try to get rid of God's Word. But you can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's like two men that had a debate many years ago. They were debating a big tall fellow, a little short fellow, and the big tall fellow wanted to get the best of the argument right off. So he got up before the congregation and turned around and addressed his opponent, the little short fellow. And he said to the congregation, he said, <laughs> Grease him right up and I'll just swallow him down. And of course everybody laughed. And a little fellow shot right back and said, well, if you did swallow me down, you'd have more brains in your stomach than you do in your head. And that's the truth when it comes to the Bible. If half these men that claim they don't believe the Bible and tear the Bible apart, if they would feast on God's word and partake of it, they'd have more brains in the stomach than they have in the head. Now here's the Lord Jesus Christ and he holds out his arms to this man. This man with a terrible burden, a terrible pack upon his back, and the pack that's the hardest pack a man can carry. Yes, it's the burden. It's the burden of unforgiven sins. The burden of unforgiven sins is the hardest pack in the world to carry and the heaviest burden because it makes a man stand up for a religion that doesn't do him any good. Every man has some religion, and a fellow who doesn't know his sin is forgiven, he has some religion he professes. But what good does it do him to profess it if it doesn't give him assurance about the forgiveness of his sin? And yet he has to stand up for it and say he believes in it, even though it doesn't do him any good, because his sins are still unforgiven. And I say further that the burden of unforgiven sins is the greatest burden a man can bear, because while a man is bearing it, all he can do is hope for heaven, while actually he's preparing for hell. How do you expect to get to heaven and have fellowship with a sinless God when the sins you have in your life have never been forgiven? You say, I've confessed them. Yes, confession is fine. Judas confessed his sins and wasn't saved. You say, I've confessed them. So did Pharaoh and he wasn't saved. You say, I've confessed them. So did Balaam and his weren't forgiven. It's, it's not enough just to confess a sin. There must be a payment for sin. There must be something to make up the balance on the ledger because God is holy and man is a sinner. Now, what's the answer? The answer is, come to Christ. He said, he said, come 
Come unto me, and I will give you rest, and you shall find rest to your souls. He said, Come unto me, come unto me. Many women, why do you delay? Let me be quite frank with you. Let me qu be quite personal with you just a minute here this evening. Quite personal. Do you know your sins are forgiven? D do you know where you're going when you die? Are you happy? Are you happy? Those three questions. Are you happy? Do you know your sins are forgiven? Do you know where you're going when you die? You say no? Then you ought to check up on your religion. I don't believe in preaching against anybody's religion, and I wouldn't. And I wouldn't even name the religion to preach against it. But I want to tell you, men and women tonight, that if your religion, whatever it is, does not give you assurance about those three things, you ought to trade it in for a lead surfboard or something useful. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to be mean or cruel or harsh. Let's just be reasonable. The Lord Jesus Christ can make you happy. The Lord Jesus Christ can give you assurance about forgiveness of sin. And best of all, the Lord Jesus Christ can let you know where you're going when you die. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, when he comes, we'll be like him. We shall see him as he is. The Bible says, these things I write to you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. And these people that don't know they have eternal life and don't know the sins are forgiven and don't know they're saved, there certainly is something wrong with their religion. I wouldn't think it'd be worth a lead balloon. What good is a religion to you? Whatever a religion, if it doesn't give you assurance about those three things. Do you know your sins are forgiven? Do you know where you're going when you die? Are you happy? Well, my Jesus, my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, can make you happy. And he can let you know where you're going when you die. And that isn't all. My Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, can give you forgiveness of sins. So why don't you receive it? Why don't you trust it? Why don't you believe on it? What do you have? You say, I'm a pretty good fellow. Oh, of course, you're a pretty good fellow. Do you know your sins are forgiven? You say, well, my religion is just as good as yours. It is? I doubt that. Does your religion give you forgiveness of sins? Well, you say you think you're right, and the other fellow thinks he's right. Oh, nonsense. Let's just cut the hot air. Three questions. Do you know your sins are forgiven? He can forgive you. Do you know where you're going when you die? He can take you to heaven. Are you happy? He can bring you happiness. He can give you peace with God. I've just drawn a picture of him, and not a very good picture of that. But God is a spirit. And if you'll ask him to save you, he'll put his Holy Spirit in your body and give you the witness of the spirit that you have eternal life. Many women, may God help you to do it tonight.